Hey, welcome to the Paranoia Kitchen. I'm Jordan, and today we're going to be doing pineapple. But not just any pineapple, we're going to dehydrate this pineapple. And we're going to show you how to put it in storage, uh, semi-long term. Uh, for this, you're going to need some Mylar bags. They come in different thicknesses, different sizes. Um, these are 6 by 9s 5 mLs. Uh, that's kind of upper mid-range thickness. I, I don't like to use thin mylar because if you have something like really dry and pokey, it'll puncture the mylar. We don't want that. Okay? So, oxygen absorbers. These are very important for storage. So get yourself some oxygen absorbers. Labels are optional, but if you're not going to use the labels, um, you just write on the Mylar bag with like some permanent marker or something, put the name of the pineapple or the treat, whatever you're putting in there, and the date. That way you know when it was made. Uh, and some cutting boards and a real sharp knife. Okay? Let's do it. Hey, this is Jordan from the future. I forgot to mention um, when I was just telling you what you needed for this to uh, grab an iron. Um, you can also use a like a woman's hair straightener or anything that gets real hot that you can seal. Um, you can use a um, food vacuum sealer machine, but it takes a long time and the seal's not that great. The iron is what I found works best, and then the hair straightener. Oh, hey there. Uh, let's get this pineapple cut up. First thing we're going to do is just get rid of this thing. We're gonna, and we're gonna go about a half an inch into the actual uh, diameter of the flesh and just get rid of it. Bam! All right, now we're gonna do the bottom. Bam! All right, now we gotta get this flesh off, this pokey flesh. We're not gonna eat that. So this is why your knife needs to be really sharp because we don't want to waste the pineapple. We want to get close as we can, not too close, not too deep, and just toss this stuff. Okay, so there we have it. Now, these eyes, what you call them, see? Like potatoes have eyes, pineapple have eyes too. Now, the really deep ones, you really want to get out of there. So what I do is I just sort of cut it at a diagonal and then the other side of the eyes at a diagonal and just pop it out like that. So you got something that looks like that. And I only do that really with the really deep eyes. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut it in half long ways like this. All right. And then, turn it around, we're gonna cut it in quarters. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna slice it up. Now, we, we want sort of thin pieces um, because the thicker pieces don't really dry that well in the dehydrator. I mean, you could have them in there for a long time. It's gonna be in there for a pretty long time as it is, probably 10 to 12 hours. We'll, we'll check on it in the morning and see how it's doing. So, probably about I'd say about uh, half an inch thick. Maybe a little less. You're going to want to do that for the whole pineapple. All right, now that we got all our pineapple cut up there, and it looks a little something like this, we're going to go ahead and throw it in the dehydrator. Um, before we throw it in the dehydrator, I just wanted to mention, um, you may have noticed that I cut that a little differently than you may be used to cutting it or see other people cutting it. Um, you see that like white stipe down the middle there? That's pretty hard, and a lot of people cut that out and toss it, but that's actually edible. So I don't cut it out, especially when I'm dehydrating it. Um, I'm just eat it. 
Why not? All right. So let's get going in this dehydrator. All right. So we got our dehydrator. Now this is a Weston dehydrator. It doesn't have a temperature gauge on it. Um, you can't adjust the temperature, but I clocked it out or temped it out and it's roughly about 160 to 165 at its hottest. Now with certain fruits, you only need certain temperatures. Um, but I tend to just dehydrate everything all at that temp because it's nice and hot and it also kills uh, certain bacteria, um, especially in foods like eggs and things like that. So, it has four layers. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on right now so it kinda heats up. And we're just gonna just kinda lay it on there. All right, I got four layers of pineapple on top of each other. I actually used that spare pineapple, a little bit of it, uh, to fill the last layer because we had more room. So you might use a pineapple and a quarter, depending on the size of your dehydrator. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the lid right on there. And that's it, really. I mean, about halfway through the cycle, it's recommended that you go in there and you flip the pineapple just just in case you know you want it you want the heat distributed evenly um the, the dehydrator does a pretty good job of that but i like to flip them about halfway in so at your six or seven hour mark and we're going to check back on these in the morning all right we got our dried pineapple slices here. It took quite a while. Uh, I cut them a little too thick. I'd recommend about a quarter of an inch, um, maybe a little more, a little less, but half an inch is uh, proven to be a little too thick to get your um, pineapple dry within you know, a comfortable amount of time. So uh, this is what they look like. Notice the colors changed. Uh, if you want to retain that yellow color of the pineapple, uh, just soak them in some lemon juice for about five minutes before you throw them in the dehydrator. I don't personally care about that uh, because I'm just doing it for uh, survival. Uh, okay. And if you want, you can just eat them now, but we're going to move on to Mylar bagging then. Okay, so we got our Mylar. Got our labels. And we got our O2 absorbers. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just make sure your hands are clean. You don't want those oils and germs or whatever on the food that you're about to put in here because it might, you know, might cause contamination. <clears throat> so, these bags, a lot of the bags, you can open them like this and they stand on their own, but these ones don't. So you gotta have to kind of hold them while you're doing it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start loading them in there. And you want to keep them um, about three inches below the top of the bag. And you can shake it a little bit and pack them a little more. But you want a little space on the top of the bag because you're going to have to um, iron that. And it would be very difficult if you pack it all the way up uh, to the top. So I'm at about three inches, maybe a little less. But that, that gives me plenty of room to go ahead and iron that. But first we're gonna put an oxygen absorber in there. Now, if you were doing this with multiple uh, bags, then I would suggest ironing them before putting the O2 absorbers in there and leaving a quarter inch space on each bag. That way you can go to each bag and put the O2 absorber in and quick iron them. Because the longer the O2 absorber is in the air, the more it's gonna be activated and used. You can tell it's um, being activated because it heats up, it's real hot. But we wanna keep that activation to a minimum until they are in the bags. All right, now we're gonna put our oxygen absorbers in the bag. Again, you wanna do this as quickly as possible. 
We're gonna put 100 cc's in each bag. That's one of these in each bag. That's pre pretty much all you need in these smaller bags. You can put more if you want. You can never put too many, um, but one is I found pretty good. And quick, throw it back in your jar so they're not used. Now, I want to do this part. I want to make sure to close these as best as possible, just like that, and iron them up quickly. All right, here we go. We're just going to iron it. There it is. Now that oxygen absorber, what it's gonna do is it's gonna suck the oxygen, it's gonna kill the oxygen, and all that's gonna be left in this bag is nitrogen and the fruit. So what usually happens is the bag gets sucked in, sort of hugs itself, sort of like a vacuum seal. Um, that's not necessarily what happens all the time, because remember, it's mostly nitrogen, so there still might be nitrogen in the air pockets, but the oxygen is gone. So we're going to do this with the other two. All right, now we have our labels. I already pre-labeled them. Uh, a pea apple, uh, not to be confused with the apples that I already had in storage. Uh, and the date is 10-4 of 21, which happens to be Charlton Heston's birthday. Happy birthday, uh, dead Charlton Heston. Uh, he was in, uh, let's see, oh yeah, the Ten Commandments. Um, Ben-Hur, that was very long-winded, and you know me with long-winded things. Um, what else was he in? Oh yeah, Soylent Green, where they actually ate people. And he was also a very prominent member of the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s, and he actually marched with Martin Luther King, and later became the president of the NRA, and it's like, from my cold, dead hands, and then... He had Alzheimer's and died in like 2008, I think. Now, put the labels on. I always put them on the area that I iron because it's the flattest surface. We only ended up using three bags for one pineapple. Okay, these are ready for storage. Now, what I use are these big uh, 40 liter or 10 gallon buckets. Uh, these are food grade buckets. You can store rice, beans, whatever in them without putting it in mylar. Um, but I'm just using it basically as a containment vessel um, so rodents and light and that sort of thing doesn't get in there. All right, so. Just gonna put them in there. And I add it to my dried fruit collection I have going in there. I'm just gonna close it up. Call it a day. All right, and that's how you mylar bag dried fruits for storage. Now you can do that with dried vegetables, you can do that with rice, you can do that with beans, anything less than a 10% water content, you can do that with. Um, make sure that you pro follow proper safety guidelines, hygiene, universal precautions, because botulism can still occur within the mylar bag. You can tell if the bag is swollen that you got a problem. And if that bag swells up, just throw it away. Now, if you're concerned about botulism, even if the bag's not even swollen up, you can boil the contents of the bag for 10 minutes uh, and it'll kill the botulism. So just remember, practice universal precautions and you'll be good. Thanks for watching and later.